Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson, and we're continuing our My Five series with Christelle Enquist, who is the founder of the Raw Society, or should I say co-founder. Christelle, it's it's great to have you with us on The Crit House. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. So for those of you who do not know, Christelle is a traveler and a photographer. And as I mentioned, the co-founder of the Raw Society, her work has been exhibited internationally, and she was featured in the Women's Street Photographers book that was published by Penguin Random House in 2021. The Raw Society was founded in 2016 as a way for Christelle to share her love of travel and photography. It started out by offering online workshops around the world, and since then it has evolved into a community united by photography, and uh, I am told by Christelle that there is the second edition of their annual magazine coming out. Christelle, maybe tell us a little bit about the magazine. Um, all right, so the magazine, um, like you said, so it's the Raw Society is all about a community that we're building, um, starting with workshops, but it has very quickly grown into something very exciting. Um, and because of it, I think um, we wanted to do a project, um, create a magazine essentially that we would want to read. And we had the access to amazing photographers, those in our community. Um, within our community, we have some uh, members standard who are basically anyone is um, allowed to sign up and become a part of our community. But then we have um, our pro members who basically are at a point where they want to start working as photographers or are already established photographers. And it also gives people who are standard members something to aspire. And so basically having that kind of pool of amazing talent, um, you know, we thought, well, we could do something with this and um, let's create this magazine and see how that goes. So essentially, this magazine is um, long form stories created by mostly our members pro. We do have guests also participating. Um, and it was like I was saying, it was, it was a total experiment. The first one, uh, we didn't know if it was going to be successful. We definitely wanted it to be a magazine that would attract photographers, obviously, but it was also for anyone who was interested in culture, in art, in um, just a variety of topics. Well, you've done you've done something that is is impressive and um, uh, with with developing community, which I think is so important in photography. I mean, that's why this channel exists in the very beginning is in part to bring people together to have conversations and to talk about photography and provide input and critique and review and and now to highlight five images, which is what we're going to talk about. So you've chosen out of out of the billions of photographs that have been uh, been taken, you've chosen five images that you uh wish to highlight like was that hard what did, what did you what's the basis but what's the philosophy behind your images here today oh it, you know what it was really hard and i had to kind of go back and start thinking why what are these images that have remained in my mind you know because we see thousands and thousands of images every day yes. um which are the ones that have you know had a significant impact um on me and i think so you know well, they, they're amazing images, they're images that I love, but um, they they also have something very personal to me or that have kind of made me look at things in a new way um, or just kind of stayed with me throughout, you know, um, as I have evolved and become a photographer. So. All right. Well, let's let's take a look at your images. So you are going back in time and you are moving away from photography from for your first image from Henri Matisse. Talk about this one. There's a there's a backstory, obviously. Um, so during high school, I was um, studying art. That was one of my um, courses, and I really loved a lot of painters. Um, Cezanne, Monet, Gauguin were some of my um, you know favorites. I loved the way they treated color. But when I came across Henri Matisse, um, it kind of he kind of blew my mind in the way that he was capable of making an image that seemed at the same time so messy and organized, um, where there's a kind of equilibrium between all of the elements. And 
also he allows you to kind of discover things that at first glance you might not see right so there's a mirror on the wall um you know you don't immediately see the fruit bowl maybe or the plant and so you're kind of discovering all of these things throughout his paintings we often say an image is a worth a thousand uh, thousand words but for me the stories behind it and understanding the uses and the whys behind everything um always brings value um to what i have in front of me and i like understanding what's behind it right so um and this particular image made me want to do that and i think that's the strongest part is that you know that action that makes you want to look into it further and and discover and understand the whys so we're starting uh, with your second image was, is Ansel Adams. You know, interestingly enough, um, I, w- I thought going into this that a lot of people would be selecting Ansel Adams images, and a few have, but not as many as I had expected. So, um, and, Well, and I was this... really hesitant to add this because I thought, oh my goodness, everyone's Every... probably talked about this image. So I'm glad that you say that. <laughs> it is the first, you are the first one to talk about this image. This is Hernandez, uh, New Mexico, right? Is that the name of that it? That is correct. That yes. is correct. And um, so this is this it's really out of tone with all the other images that I have um, selected, but it is definitely one of those images that have stuck in my mind um, since I was in university. So I studied at Parsons in Paris. Mm-hmm. Not many people know that there's a pa- Parsons in Paris, but there is. And I was studying a BBA, so nothing to do with design or photography or anything, but we got to do electives. And one of my electives was photography. So um, I chose photography and for the very first time I was learning about the history of photography. And this was one of the photographs that came up, obviously. You know, this image is, to me, it just kind of reminds me of the insignificance of ourselves in the greater scale of you know earth and the world and i think that this image really you know there's something so beautiful there's something so extreme you know the the fact that the sky occupies um two-thirds of the frame and the tiny little village where if you look closely uh, i'm sure you know i don't think that this on a screen it does it justice because there's so much detail in the little bits in the foreground you've got the you know crosses and um tiny little houses and all that kind of stuff but it just you know to me that resonates as the the insignificant how insignificant we are this one is by somebody you know quite well Mm -hmm, Um, i do uh so tell us this is this is taken by your husband your partner Yes, my husband. So this is uh, the corny alert because, you know, it's my husband. Um, but, um, you know, I I probably would not be a photographer if it hadn't been for him. And um, so basically I had a career in advertising. I did that for 10 years, burnout and uh, decided to go traveling for six months alone. And um, at one point, uh, Jorge, who um, he, we already knew each other, but he actually came uh, to Nepal and I was there and we decided that when he was done with his assignment and I was volunteering in Nepal, we'd, um, you know, get together and, and go explore Nepal together. I have always loved this image from day one, um, but it also has a story behind it that makes me, you know, particularly attached to this image. And um, and what I love about it as an image without the story is the kind of reverse roles in this image. Mm -hmm. And there is an ambiguity that in the moment made me ask questions. Right. So I saw Jorge taking this photo was, you know, in the front seat of this moment that was really just two seconds. We, you know, Jorge saw that image. I did too, but I didn't even have time to react. I was just like looking and thinking, "Mm, that's interesting. It's it's one of the only temples that has a child priest that has to be under the age of 12, um, who kind of runs this 
temple and after 30 days it gets passed on to an, another child priest and it has a lot to do with the purity of children and that is why they're in charge of kind of looking after the temple so it's a beautiful story um, it also happens to be the first image that Jorge had published in National Geographic well and what a great opportunity to see as a, as a budding photographer the creation of an image that has resonance beyond just uh, the moment you were the two of you were together. That's, Absolutely. What a great story. Yeah. Alex Webb with the, the uh, he's just, he is so amazing. Also National Geographic photographer, but uh, this one has always astounded me. It has. And this, I think, kind of brings me back to my fascination with color and with Matisse, which is why, um, you know, when I was, choosing these images I was like oh that kind of makes sense you know I wasn't really conscious of what I was doing but Alex Webb um, was when I first started looking at his photographs obviously you know he's an he's a master of composition and and you, you just wonder you know how did he manage to get this moment where everyone is in the perfect spot and everything but for me what was especially interesting and it made me have a renewed interest for color was his use of color. I just think that, you know, I was, I looked at this photograph and, and I thought, well, why do I love this photograph so much? What is it that makes me be so interested and engaged? And it was the color, you know, it's well composed, but the color is something that's really saying something to me. Unlike a painter that starts with an empty canvas and they're adding brush strokes, with photography you don't get to choose you need to you know you yes. start with a full canvas and you have to eliminate the things that are in your frame and choose very carefully what is inside so the ability to identify and see these colors and um react like alex does i think is pretty formidable your fifth image uh, and i'm gonna allow My you to pronounce fifth. this because i mispronounced it before harry <laughs> harry gruyere harry Gr Harry Gruyere, I would say. Um, I'm sure that I'm not Belgian. I don't know. You know, I could be saying <laughs> it completely wrong. Um, but so, you know, he, th there's a theme coming along here. It's color, right? You yes. can see that I'm, I like color. It's something that fascinates me. Harry Gruyere is undoubtedly another master of color. Um, but what I, you know, as I evolve as a photographer and as I look for new things, I think what I have noticed or come to appreciate in Harry Gruyere's work is that there is a certain emotion that is often lacking in other more color photography photos, you know, and I would even say in Alex Webb's, I mean, the colors are amazing, yes. the, 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 the way they're composed are amazing, but sometimes there's a bit of emotional element that's lacking. And I think that Harry Greyer manages to get all of it right. You know, he he's great at creating a atmosphere. There's an emotion the the moments, you know, that everything comes together. So there's the color, you've got the composition, but there is an emotion there that kind of draws me in even more. and you know, cuts me a little bit deeper than the other um, great color photographers. Well, Christelle, um, you have shown us five images that have, uh, and in, each, in talking about each one, you have, you have uh, taught me something. Um, so I, I greatly appreciate that. Um, this has been a, a fascinating discussion um, at every level. Thank you so much for joining us on the crew house here. so yeah. thank you very much once again for inviting me and absolutely uh, we'll be in touch and we will link out to the raw society out in right. the show notes so people could take a look at the possibility of getting your next magazine um, or participate in the raw society uh, which i would encourage all of you to do and if you are interested uh to in joining us on the crit house and are interested in showing your five images then feel free to Hashtag with my five on Instagram when you show your five images and then tag us at the Crit House as well. Christelle Enquist, just a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you all for watching the Crit House.